Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. It could only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Rebel Hearts. This is your host, Christy Rees. I'm so excited you're joining us today. It's going to be an amazing show talking about one of my favorite topics, which all has to do with veganism. And as you know, Rebel Hearts is here to inspire you to become the change that you want to be in the world. So hopefully we're going to continue bringing in them amazing guests who are inspiring you to see what is possible for us and what we can do to make this world the most amazing paradise place. <laughs> and there is a lot we're going to talk about in a moment, but before we do, let me give you a, a big shout out to a company I absolutely love. Strategy Social is one of the fastest growing Instagram growth agencies in the market today. Strategy Social helps people grow their Instagram to increase their sales for their businesses, gain more sponsorships for their personal brand, and improve the overall fan base of these companies and brands. It is the best overall customer service and growth company any channel can find on the market today. And I tell, tell you, Rebel Arts, it's true. I've been working with a company for a while. Love Aaron, the founder. They're absolutely rocking awesome. And they're actually offering you a special. So go to strategiesocial.co, not .com, co, forward slash rebels for a special offer for all the Rebel Hearts out there. And then I want to share something else with you. Ever since I was a little kid, I was super, super sensitive to energies, and I was feeling everything on a really strong level. I would pick up the energies from other people, meaning I would be around other people, and all of a sudden I would start crying, and I wasn't even sad, but it was the person who was next to me who was sad. Or I was getting really frustrated, and it was even my own frustration. It was someone else in the room. And that is what's called empathic ability or empathic skills. And there's a lot of people really empathic out there and you know you even see little kids who are in a good mood at home and they go to the grocery store and all of a sudden they're super angry or frustrated and it might be that they just have picked up some energy from the people around them so what we did my partner and I we created some amazing amazing energy tools for you to learn so you can go out into the world feel your own energy have a clear energy field and be fully fully empowered about who you are so go to avitra.com, that's A-V-A-I-T-R-I-A.com to check out all the different programs and find out how you can be empowered in your own being. All right, and now let's move over to today's guests, and I'm so excited they're joining us today. Meg and Komi Vora are sisters and co-founders behind Los Angeles-based fashion label Delicate Rain. Delicate Rain is a 100% cruelty-free, eco-lux women's label utilizing animal-friendly textiles to provide an army of guilt-free, seasonless, sorry, seasonless garments which create a harmonious blend of humaneness, opulence, and street style. These sisters are disrupting the fashion industry by being a voice for the voiceless, empowering other females to go after their passions, changing the preconceived notions of what luxury is, plus making compassion cool through their designs and advocacy. And they're total rebel hearts. So let me welcome <laughs> Megan Comey. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's so wonderful that you're here today. And I'm, we were just saying, I've been doing so many Zoom shows. It's actually so amazing to sit in the room with you and, and be with you today. Likewise, because we're a fan of your show as well. <laughs> Thank, so. you. Thank you. I actually want to start where it all started for you because I always feel sharing the heroes or for you, the heroine's journey. Is, is inspiring people to say, hey, you know, this is wh how, how they found their life path. This is how they found their passion. So what was the moment when you went, hmm, we should create an eco-friendly fashion label that is also vegan? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think there was different components that played into this. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of it had to do with our upbringing. Mm -hmm. So we're East Indian, and mm -hmm. so our dad was raised Jain. And for the okay. people that don't know what mm -hmm. Jainism is, Jainism is a lifestyle that is um, really adheres to the principle mm -hmm. of ahimsa, mm -hmm. which means, you know, 
no violence towards any living beings. So there was just this whole component of deep compassion mm-hmm. ingrained within us from a young age. And our mm-hmm. mother was raised Hindu, which also mm-hmm. has like mm-hmm. a lot of ties to compassion as well. Yeah. Um, and you were raised vegetarian, is that right? Yeah. 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 But now we're vegan. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think it was also just um, when we started shopping and looking mm-hmm. for items in more of like the contemporary market and the mm-hmm. higher end design market, mm-hmm. we couldn't find um, products that we were seeking to our liking, Mm -hmm. our aesthetic, the quality that we were seeking Mm -hmm. that had an animal friendly version. Yeah. And so that kind of like sparked something in our Mm -hmm. mind. And we also wanted to change the perception of what cruelty free clothing looked like, Mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of times people were thinking that it was like granola, you know, crunchy and like, (laughs) like heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't made with like good quality. Mm -hmm. So we kind of wanted to change that and offer, put something out on the market that people would want, you know, because mm-hmm. um, we were certain that if we were looking for something <coughs> like that, I'm sure mm-hmm. there's other people in the world that want the same yeah. thing. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like, it's really interesting that you're bringing that up because I feel like there is such a stigma attached to eco-friendly or cruelty-free clothing that it has to be, you know, saggy or whatever it right. is. It yeah. cannot look fancy or stylish. And it feels like it's it's preventing certain people to buy, from buying that kind of clothing and totally. opening up that market. It's, it's very limited. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't only just cruelty-free. I think we also wanted to embark on um, attacking what, people perceived as luxury as well Mm -hmm. you know because a lot of times like people affiliate luxury with an animal derived skin or product or anything like Mm -hmm. that and that's what we've been taught all these Mm -hmm. years from like traditional fashion Mm -hmm. houses so we wanted to kind of disrupt the industry and be like hey that's not luxurious (laughs) you know there's another form of luxury Mm -hmm. yeah and did you have any background in fashion was that something you've been interested in we actually don't have <laughs> no. a no. traditional design background at all. Um, we did go to school because that was kind mm-hmm. of, you know, the traditional Indian mindset mm-hmm. where it's like you need to go to school and mm-hmm. get a degree and follow this particular path. Yeah. Um, so we went to school for business and communications, mm-hmm. marketing, mm-hmm. so like all yeah. the things that look good on paper for our <laughs> parents. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. so nothing to do with like fashion or mm-hmm. art or design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't have a, we didn't come from a fashion background, but we did as growing up just mm-hmm. for fun. We would mm-hmm. you know design clothes. Nice. It was really interesting. Yeah. Like we didn't do that for not thinking that you can like make money off mm-hmm. of it or mm-hmm. have a profession mm-hmm. out of it. But we would still be designing our own clothes. So we would go to the store and maybe like buy a T-shirt or something. Nice. But we would still like cut it up or mm-hmm. um, put on <laughs> patches or yeah. safety mm-hmm. pins or something yeah, to like yeah. make it more unique mm-hmm. to us. Um, and there would be times when we would take trips to India too, mm-hmm. and we would work with the seamstress and mm-hmm. we would source some fabric and just like design a skirt or dress. And this yeah, was literally yeah. all just for fun. Mm-hmm. You That's know, okay. every time yeah. we had to go to like an Indian function and we had to wear like a sari or a particular mm-hmm. Indian mm-hmm. outfit, we'd want to be like, no, we don't want to have it look the way that it does off the rack. Like we want it look different. And so we would um, find ways to create new designs mm-hmm. out of the outfits we'd find mm-hmm. or like we'd be like you know what no that's not going to work and yeah, our yeah. mom would be like why are you so picky that's <laughs> so difficult <laughs> it was like, yeah and I feel like it's so it's so beautiful what you're sharing you had this this interest or the, just having fun with fashion yeah and, and then we're we're kind of following the traditional path but the fashion you know it feels like that's that's where your spark was despite what you showed up to do for a while right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and what what was that the final thing where you said, okay, we need to do something. We need to create some fashion and, and bring it out onto the market. I think, oh, do you want to? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, um, I think it, it, there got a point in our life where we were just like at two different jobs mm-hmm. and we were sitting there and we we're like, okay, what are we going to do with the rest mm-hmm. of our life? Because this isn't it. Mm-hmm. You know, we wanted something more that was self-satisfying mm-hmm. and fulfilling and we didn't know exactly what that was, but um, we every time that we would come home at night, we would have these conversations, and for mm-hmm. whatever reason, mm-hmm. it just always led back to mm-hmm. have wanting to do something with fashion, and I think we wanted to merge that with also um, 
you know, kind of going back to what we weren't able to mm -hmm. find to our mm -hmm. liking and merging the two and creating something into existence that didn't mm. previously exist. Yeah, yeah. And what makes Delicate Rain different from other companies? I think um, it's really our approach. Mm -hmm. So we didn't set out for it to be, um, you know, a made by vegans for vegans type mm -hmm. of company. Mm -hmm. It's more like we want to speak to a different audience. Nice. Um, you know, a big misconception with our company is, um, you know, a lot of girls will see something and they'll say, oh, that's so cute. I really, I, I love that, but I'm not vegan. And I'm like, okay. Only vegans can wear right, vegan clothes. Right. Please. Um, <laughs> just kidding. And so uh. then it kind of turned into this whole thing of like, oh, I'm not vegan or I'm not vegetarian mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I still wear leather or I wear like these other items, but I really like what you guys mm -hmm. are doing and I like that style. So mm -hmm. we were kind of like, you know what? No, we need to take a different approach because we want people to be attracted to the yeah. style mm -hmm. and attracted to the mm -hmm. aesthetic. And then once they purchase it or once they learn about it more, then they're going to realize, oh, wow, you know, they're getting these, like, extra gifts with purchase, yeah, if you will, because yeah. then they, you know, mm -hmm. realize that, wow, it's eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. And um, I saved an animal life because it's cruelty-free. And mm -hmm. I also now saved um, a human life because it's ethically made. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of wanted to um, speak to the people that probably aren't looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, and not even because they're not vegan, but just like people that are thinking, oh, well, here we go again. Another mm -hmm. green mm -hmm. bandwagon yeah, jumper yeah. company or something, <laughs> I don't know. So um, I think that's like a big uh, thing that stands out and makes mm -hmm. us different. Yeah. And also our motto, which is the triple E factor. Edgy, okay. ethical, and everlasting. Love yeah. it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so I want to move a little bit into the educational aspect of eco-friendly vegan clothing. Mm -hmm. So what makes clothing vegan? Because I feel like a lot of us don't realize, I mean, leather is really obvious, but there are other aspects that make um, clothing not vegan friendly or not cruelty free. So do you kind of share some of that with us? Well, like you mentioned, um, so everyone knows that like fur leather or mm -hmm. like the obvious ones, mm -hmm. it really goes into um, just reading labels and checking to see that there isn't mm -hmm. any animal products or animal byproducts, fibers or mm -hmm. hairs. Mm -hmm. um, so that would include wool, mm -hmm. silk, mm -hmm. mohair, angora, mm -hmm. alpaca, shearling, mm -hmm. um, there's just there's a lot that people don't yeah. realize. Um, there's actually a site online mm -hmm. that um, breaks down all textiles and fibers, mm. and then you can just like look them up one by one, and it tells you verbatim what kind of things um, is in it. Mm -hmm. So and that's like a great thing to use if you're mm -hmm. shopping, because mm -hmm. um, that way you're aware and you're checking labels, yeah. you're reading labels, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much what co it comes down to in terms yeah. of like making something yeah. vegan mm -hmm. or not vegan yeah at least yeah. in clothing yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's so interesting because and now and in, in the eco movement there were a lot of people wearing wool or continue to wear wool mm -hmm. so why what what happens when in the wool creation process or process you know well a lot yeah. of people don't know that wool is actually the fourth most harmful material in the world mm -hmm. so it creates a lot of um toxins just to create mm -hmm. wool um but in terms of like the global you know animal agriculture takes up 51 percent of global gas emissions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so a lot of people don't realize that with like the animal derived fabrications mm -hmm. there's a lot of toxins that are created and it all stems from um you know, in order to keep an animal derived product not from decaying, the chemicals mm -hmm. that are used is what's creating like the environment mm -hmm. to be really polluted mm -hmm. and bad mm -hmm. for you. That's amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of all the um, environmental impact of eating animal based products, but I never even thought about wearing something like wool, what an impact it had on the environment. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That. <laughs> You're welcome. So in, in the whole process of creating eco friendly clothing, what are some of your personal favorite materials that you've discovered and that you love using? 
Oh my gosh, there's so many great ones on the okay. horizon. Yeah. There are. It's your personal one. But, but um, have one. <laughs> I'm, I think we're just excited to yeah. constantly keep seeing like the innovative yeah. textiles. I mean, mm-hmm. there's stuff uh, that's mushroom leather, wow. um, mushroom leather. pineapple leather. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Fun one there's, that you really like. Um, your kombucha. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, there's uh, a form of kombucha leather that they're working on right now. That's wow. like made from fermented tea. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> so they're in like mixed with like some vinegar, sugar, uh-huh. and yeast. And um, it's creating a certain type of durability mm-hmm. and um, a leather like texture. Mm-hmm. So they're, you know, really working on seeing mm-hmm. how this they can move forward with this because that's usually um, the concern is can you mass produce it? Yeah, you yeah. Know, that's mm-hmm. like what everyone yeah. ultimately wants. Exactly, because we're getting rid of the animal aspect right. and then we're creating other things that are destroying the environment because it cannot be mass produced. So it's harmful in the mass production process. Yeah. Right. So the great thing about all the ones even that Comey mentioned too mm-hmm. and there's like a few others there's like um, apple peel leather mm-hmm. apple peel leather really <laughs> oh my gosh um, and then I think you mentioned the pineapple where it comes yeah. from the, pineapple, like, the waste yeah. of the pineapple leaves mm-hmm. so everything it's awesome because um, it's all biodegradable mm-hmm. so you Amazing. don't have um, you know the landfill problem mm-hmm. because there's other um cruelty-free options Mm -hmm. that may not be 100% biodegradable, but you can still um, break them down enough Mm -hmm. to, like, recycle Mm -hmm. them to use them into something else. So I know for a lot of people, you can't maybe go into your favorite local boutique and Mm -hmm. find an Mm -hmm. apple peel leather (laughs) item. No. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) I mean, that's what we're all working towards. Mm -hmm. But um, if someone were to be looking for like mm-hmm. a better mm-hmm. alternative to leather mm-hmm. then um pu's a much mm-hmm. better option mm-hmm. than pvc because okay. a lot of um you know faux leather is made from pvc mm-hmm. which um the highest component in that is plastic and yeah. so when you're burning yeah. plastic into the air mm-hmm. you're creating mm-hmm. a whole nother level mm-hmm. of um, toxins so mm-hmm. pu has much less toxins, much less chemicals mm-hmm. released into the air, mm-hmm. so you're lowering um, mm-hmm. your carbon footprint that way. And mm-hmm. also, you know, um, sometimes depending on what chemicals are used in it to bind it together, mm-hmm. um, if it's like not from here, it comes from another country yeah. or something, and you're not really aware of what mm-hmm. exactly is going mm-hmm. into it, once it gets really hot and it kind of starts sticking to your skin and whatnot, there's been concerns that sometimes that seeps into your skin, creating, yeah. you know, another problem. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there's not enough studies, unfortunately, mm. on that. So we mm-hmm. don't know what the harm is, but we do know that people mm-hmm. have been experiencing rashes or they mm-hmm. feel like they're allergic. And yeah. yeah. They're like, I'm allergic to clothing. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's like, no, yeah. you're probably allergic mm-hmm. to the toxins mm-hmm. that are being emitted yeah. from that material. And I remember that I had had a rash when I was in, in college and it wouldn't go away. And then my doctor eventually oh. found out that there was pentachlorphenol in it. And it's something that is, you know, in hardwood floor, but also used in leather. And it didn't come from my clothing at that time. But I'm like, I never thought about there was that there would be toxins in in, in our products and our clothes that we wore that would give me skin rashes Mm -hmm. and and literally create a toxic environment in my body. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Scary. Because it's like polluting Mm -hmm. the environment, but then Mm -hmm. it's also polluting the skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think there's two big. concerns with that Mm because it's like the whole cruelty free aspect Mm -hmm. and then like the sustainability Mm -hmm. side and the manufacturing Mm -hmm. process so it's like three different beasts to tackle Mm -hmm. and when it comes to softer fabrics like let's say you don't want to use cotton for example because again from what I know there's a lot of spraying that's going on with cotton these days the pesticides Mm -hmm. what else so um with cotton, it's always been like a huge debate because okay. it's such a <laughs> money maker for so many other mm-hmm. countries mm-hmm. that um, are producing it. So mm-hmm. it's like they're, you know, these workers are getting an income from, you know, harvesting and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But then it's also like, but at what cost? So mm-hmm. organic cotton is still like the better alternative to mm-hmm. that. And um, they are working on a few other. Um, you know, breathable materials like mm-hmm. that, but I don't, I haven't seen anything that's like mm-hmm. shiny gold stars yet, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to recommend. Mm-hmm. But um, 
one that a lot of people do tend to go to because it's still like a cheaper alternative mm -hmm. is recycled polyester. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it pulled a few facts about that. Yeah, actually. do you want to share <laughs> with us? Um, <laughs> so basically, when um, people are looking to, so a lot of times clothes are made out of polyester because mm -hmm. it's a lot cheaper mm -hmm. and it's easy to manufacture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, a lot of people don't realize that it takes about um, seventy million barrels. Whoa, <laughs> of so, oil whoa. <laughs> to produce um, the virgin polyester that's like used in different textiles wow. every year. So, um, you know, recycled polyester is a much better, safer, greener mm -hmm. alternative mm -hmm. because it takes, you know, less than half mm -hmm. the energy to produce, mm -hmm. but it also is utilizing mm -hmm. the plastic drinking bottles, like mm -hmm. water bottles that yeah. people use. Mm -hmm. And so in turn, you're keeping those bottles out of landfills. Ah, so at least you're nice. like helping mm -hmm. to solve another problem. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. 70 million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Same. just, yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and would you share some other fabric options? I just want to get a little bit more information about what other fabrics you love working with. They have a banana silk, yeah. which um, is derived from banana leaves. So it's wow. like a... Um, it's comparable to silk when they're using mm -hmm. it a lot more in Asian countries, mm -hmm. um, more specifically like Japan, you know, mm -hmm. um, they've been utilizing it in kimonos, so it mm -hmm. gives like a nice drape and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Nice. But yeah, because it has, um, so it's made from the stalk of the banana mm -hmm. plant and it mm -hmm. has a natural sheen to it. Mm -hmm. So um, the inner strands of that material are mm -hmm. so fine. So when they're like sewn together, it really replicates silk very nicely. And mm -hmm. as Comey mentioned, the oh, drape, amazing. but it's also like the feel of it. Mm -hmm. so, you know, you like that like soft feel mm -hmm. against your yeah. body. Yeah. Um, and it's not like crunchy, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. <laughs> like, it's just like when you talk about it, it just feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really imagine. Like it just like, you yeah. know, caresses your skin yeah. softly. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I'm then, like, Oh, sorry, so, sorry, good. I'm just like I'm just just like so fascinated by what you're sharing and what is currently being created and what's already out there from banana leaves and and what was the other thing um, the, the pineapples I'm mm -hmm. like and kombucha I'm like that's amazing. There's yeah. so many things to look forward yeah. to, totally. and it's great because I think that um, you know one thing that we were really excited about even with delicate mm -hmm. rain is to be able to start that conversation mm -hmm. and get that awareness out there yeah. so people start thinking about mm -hmm. what other alternatives mm -hmm. um, can I be utilizing yeah. you know, for my clothing and my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And I think that once more consumers start mm -hmm. to really understand and mm -hmm. they start becoming aware, yeah. hopefully that's what's mm -hmm. going to create that demand mm -hmm. so more yeah. people can start getting their thinking caps on and creating yeah. more um, textiles. Mm -hmm. That's like something that Comey and I always talk about I know. too. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, it's, we're at an awesome time right now where a lot of mm -hmm. companies are starting to ban fur completely. Mm -hmm. Even yes. counties, you know, yeah. we had San Francisco County just oh, completely yeah. ban it. Really? Yeah. Wow. And West Hollywood already bans it. Wow. Um, and that's just mm -hmm. talking in California specifically. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, even like um, corporate, like, other fashion houses mm -hmm. have completely eliminated fur. And this is like the first time ever they've ever just wow. agreed Taking to it take out. it yeah. out of their collections. I'm getting full chills. I'm, <laughs> sure that I'm like, that's just amazing. I know. Yeah, it feels yeah. like there is such a shift happening on this planet. And, and for me, even veganism itself, mm -hmm. it's just, it just exploding at the moment. I don't know how many vegan restaurants, luckily we're in LA, so there's a lot of options. Right. But it's like oh, yes. one after yeah. the next, after the next. Mm -hmm. And I'm so honored about you sharing that information because, you know, I didn't know a lot of these things. And I usually do a lot of research <laughs> on my vegan stuff. Um, so yeah. Another really big exciting win for all mm -hmm. of us in California was we became, as of yesterday, the first state to ban the sale of any beauty product that has been tested on animals. Yay! 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 Woohoo! So, that, <laughs> is really that is amazing. Yay, keep going, California. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone else needs to follow. Steve. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about, I want to keep talking about the, your ingredients, so to say, from the fabric. Let's move over to the colors because I know there's also such an eco factor when it comes to the colors that you're using. 
So, <laughs> so <laughs> she loves the fabric. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Take that over. Um, let me go back to my fact sheet. Um, yeah. So basically, a lot of people don't realize that when they're buying something that's colored for the mm -hmm. most part it's been dyed mm -hmm. so most people are not buying um straight pdf fabric mm -hmm. and what that means is prepared for dye okay so when you have a fabric like that it um has depending on what material it is mm -hmm. it's gonna be a little thicker a little mm -hmm. coarser mm -hmm. like it'll feel rough and whatnot so mm -hmm. people will throw dyes or washes on it mm -hmm. not only to color mm -hmm. it but sometimes to give it that soft hand or mm -hmm. to give it a certain feel mm -hmm. now if you are not putting the right practices into place with this and you don't have regulations and you don't um you're not aware of what your discharge is and how you're dumping mm -hmm. the remnants of it and whatnot then you can be causing a much bigger problem mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. where the really really big pollution factor mm -hmm. lies within fashion in general whether yeah. it's eco-friendly cruelty mm -hmm. free just fashion in mm -hmm. general i think comey had mentioned that um you know fashion was the second largest polluting industry mm -hmm. behind oil so you can it's, see it's so wild yeah. how, <laughs> Um, dirty fashion can be mm -hmm. but I mean you know and it's not something that you're changing overnight but there are steps that we can all mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. and if you don't know mm -hmm. we want to tell you so yeah. <laughs> we can like all make better mm -hmm. um, you know purchasing decisions and mm -hmm. kind of become aware of like what social and environmental impacts they have mm -hmm. yeah. so with the dying um, you know there was a really interesting thing that I came upon when I was doing more research about like the dyeing of fabrics mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. how that's connected to mm -hmm. environmental pollution. So basically there's um, most of the fashion that we see is mm -hmm. like made overseas. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah. like, it's, you know, in third world countries. Yeah, like lots, India, lots of China, India, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And so this example comes from Indonesia. So 68% mm -hmm. Of um, their manufacturing and clothing and all that is located on one river. It's called the Sitaram River. Mm -hmm. It's located in the upper portion of it. And basically, what happens is because of all the discharge and everything that they've mm -hmm. been just dumping into this river. River. Yeah. <laughs> because now <laughs> yeah. it's considered. Um, is it still a river? <laughs> in the yeah. open yeah. sewer. Yeah. Um, Basically, it's now filled with lead, mercury, arsenic, oh, and a bunch of other toxins. Wow. So anybody that lives within that vicinity, including humans and wildlife, mm -hmm. are, um, you know, facing serious consequences mm -hmm. from everything that's mm -hmm. been dumped in. Mm -hmm. And Greenpeace recently did... Um, you know, a study recently mm -hmm. with them, and they tested the discharge mm -hmm. um, in the water, and they found um, a disturbing amount. I'm going to read the quote. So Gr Greenpeace described the discharge as highly caustic, so that means if any human skin comes into contact with it, it will burn on site. No. Mm -hmm. Wow. And for aquatic wildlife, it's just a done deal. Yeah, so yeah. anything that's like living in there has already mm -hmm. perished. I mean, wow. that kind of also um, goes into the leather production at mm -hmm. tan mm -hmm. at, okay. with these tannery workers. Mm -hmm. They did a study um, or actually an investigation in Bangladesh mm -hmm. and they went into these factories and these tannery workers are um, soaking these uh, hives mm -hmm. and um, What's happening is that they're they're unprotected workers, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, children are on this premises as well. Mm -hmm. So all of them mm -hmm. are intact with these chemicals, and what they're finding is that um, these workers are starting to get skin discoloration, skin wow. disorders, wow. skin diseases, and also cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a study that said that about an estimated 90% of them are going to die before the age of 50, just oh being exposed gosh. to this kind of stuff. That so is, it's just not yeah. even the dye. It's also mm -hmm. in, like, the leather industry mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. 
And well, then I assume <clears throat> also because the skin is our biggest organ as we're wearing these clothes, it goes into our own body, into our own organ system right. and affects it probably in a, in a not so positive way. Yeah. Well, especially in those areas mm -hmm. with like the leather and the high, um, you know, dye discharge mm -hmm. or areas where they're like just mass producing for no mm -hmm. reason. So that goes into the whole fast fashion spiel mm -hmm. of things. But, um, you know, it's one thing to have like the water pollution, but then we don't really even talk about like the air pollution side mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I think yesterday, the day before, um, Reader's Digest actually randomly released a rele uh, study on how air pollution really affects you and mm. um, the skin. Mm -hmm. And so they had discovered that like people that are living in these high toxin areas are, you know, more susceptible to autism, mm. dementia, lung disease, um, premature aging. Wow. So sad. <laughs> a lot of things that you like yeah. don't even think yeah. about, yeah. you know, until you've been mm -hmm. there maybe for 30 years mm -hmm. and you're like, why does my face yeah. look like this? Yeah. And why do yeah. I always feel mm -hmm. irritated yeah. and it triggers headaches? Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I had just had a conversation with someone who's like, who went, the amount of people getting sick, and no matter if it's cancers, Alzheimer's, dementia, it's just rising like crazy. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. where's it all coming from? It's all the toxins that we're exposed to on a constant level. Right. And and we know about the toxins yeah. from, from the vegetables, the fruit, from the foods that we eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that you're sharing about the toxicity of the clothing our fashion industry because you know it's it's something that not a lot of people actually talk about I, I feel like there is a conversation that needs to start happening and educating people about totally. the detrimental effects on our physical health but also the physical health of our planet of our environment of course. Yeah. yeah so thank you for doing that <laughs> <ladies>. <laughs> I want to circle back to something else you said at the very beginning you came from a very traditional Indian family mm -hmm. and and you walk the traditional path for a while until you, you the rebel came out and said, no, I'm gonna do fashion yeah. mom and dad yeah. <laughs> um, and one of your in your ambitions is you said because of, of your own journey you want to empower women to do the same how do you see yourself empowering women to 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 come out of these paradigms expectations that are so premeditated for us and and open up new pathways for everyone I think a lot of it has to do with like feeling okay with knowing that um, you, how can I say this? <laughs> it's okay to be the black sheep of your family. <laughs> yeah. um, and that fear is something that holds a lot of people back. And mm -hmm. that was something that her and I were always struggling with too. Mm -hmm. Cause we were like, well, what's mom gonna say? What's dad mm -hmm. gonna say, you know? Yeah. Um, can we do this? Are mm -hmm. we going to get in trouble? Mm -hmm. We were asking, can, yeah. are we going to get in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you know what? Who cares? Because mm -hmm. we just felt like that we had a point of view that mm -hmm. we wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, put out there. And um, and it's scary. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it, it really is. But mm -hmm. it's just once you overcome that, that's mm -hmm. going to give you the confidence mm -hmm to move forward and mm -hmm. that's also what's going to keep you going when you just mm -hmm. feel like this isn't what I want to be yeah. doing anymore yeah. or like this doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me um so I think it's a lot of like digging in deep within yourself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. feeling like this is okay mm -hmm. and you don't need anyone's approval mm -hmm. right and just like knowing that fear is an illusion yeah you know it's mm -hmm. not really it's literally just all in your head mm -hmm. and just giving yourself the chance to Encourage yourself and just mm -hmm. prove to yourself that you can mm -hmm. do something that you want to mm -hmm. do and follow your passion. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can, you know, people can, other women can use mm -hmm. us as examples of mm -hmm. like just continuing yeah. and embarking on their mm -hmm. journey or whatever mm -hmm. it is that their heart desires. Yeah. Was there something special that happened in both of your lives? We looked at each other and said, you know, we're working in these, these two jobs at the moment. And this is not our truth, but this is our truth. This is what resonates with us. And... What gave you the courage to finally follow the path that you're on? Was there something, you know, or what supported you where you said, you know, now I'm just going to conquer the fear or, or just go forward and make that decision to follow my passion? I, th 
<laughs> Go ahead. Um, no, I was going to say, I think a lot of it also went back to when um, we were talking about how we would have those conversations, like coming mm-hmm. home from, mm-hmm. you know, our respective jobs. And we were like, you know, we really want to do something else. And we would go back to the whole idea of fashion. And we decided we also would love to do something together. Mm-hmm. And then as we dug deeper and deeper, um, we kind of also both realized that if we were going to do something with fashion or clothing or mm-hmm. something that's mm-hmm. still considered superficial, mm-hmm. if you will, we wanted to have a bigger meaning and purpose mm-hmm. behind it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that's when, you know, Comey had kind of stumbled upon, you know, the whole concept of, well, you know, we're Jane and we're Hindu and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she just like was connecting the dots, mm-hmm. like X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z, like, you know. We, we've been raised vegetarian our whole lives and, you know, even g- growing up, we'd go to, like, the temples and mm-hmm. there was always conversations mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. too, with, like, you know, other people that we would meet where they also felt like mm-hmm. they couldn't find cruelty-free items, mm-hmm. whether it was in, like, beauty or fashion or food. I mean, now it's, like, beauty and food is yeah, just, like, yeah. a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. But, like you mentioned fashion, before, there's yeah. still a disconnect right. mm-hmm. with um, the fashion and the food. So mm-hmm. I think that was kind of, like... We sat down and Comey really started connecting the dots. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I think you're onto something. <laughs> <laughs> so. I love it. Mm-hmm. And and you said, I think you said it, Mick. Oh, what would mom say? What would dad say? So what did mom and dad say when they say, Hey, mom and dad, we're gonna give up our preconceived route and we're gonna do this fashion thing? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just more. We had to prove ourselves, if yeah. anything, you know. Mm-hmm. And then once, like, they started kind of seeing the results Mm -hmm. um there was like some positive Mm -hmm. feedback and people out there actually cared and Mm -hmm. it wasn't just like all in our head Mm -hmm. then um, I think they (laughs) were kind of like okay they're you know (laughs) this is something that can actually be taken Mm -hmm. seriously yeah Yeah. that's awesome so now they're like yay go Megan Comey (laughs) yeah (laughs) now they're 100% supporting cheerleaders you (laughs) have to (laughs) keep proving yourself right yeah Yeah. so our parents then I love it totally Um, I think it's just been like a learning curve for everyone Mm because like as I think Comey had mentioned we're first generation mm-hmm. born. Mm-hmm. So yeah. our parents even coming here from India, mm-hmm. you know, they just. It's a whole new world yeah, for them. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. their um, idea of success is only mm-hmm. one path. Mm-hmm. And we're, you know, we're like, mm-hmm. there's just not one path to success, guys. Yeah. Like there's multiple paths. And mm-hmm. we want to show you that we can go on a mm-hmm. different <laughs> route and still get there. Mm-hmm. And I feel like also there's a really specific definition a lot of people have about success. Oh, definitely. And, and for me, what I'm seeing you do, your success even lies in, in, in the message that you're spreading. Besides, you know, getting the attention or, or whatever else it is on the external level, you are changing the world with the work you're doing. So that's a huge success for me. So Thank ladies, you. that's Thank what you. we're hoping and trying yeah. for. <laughs> Um, I read somewhere you're doing a lot of work also and and have the intention to continue doing a lot of work giving back Mm -hmm. I know you you did um, something with I I wrote it on a nylon curating initiative for the World Animal Day Mm -hmm. and and, and there's a few other things why is it so important for you to give back because these other charities and organizations like they align with our mission and principles Mm -hmm. and they're actively going out there and investigating Mm -hmm. and making Mm -hmm. sure that these animals are you know, they're, they're taken care of and they're getting out of like these cruel conditions. Mm -hmm. And we just want to keep supporting other charities that are volunteering and going out there to do that work. Mm -hmm. Cause we're just, you know, it's teamwork makes the dream work, right? It's not just like only one company that can do Mm -hmm. something to make a difference. Mm -hmm. We all have to work together to, and because we're all on the same mission Mm -hmm. and Meg and I always talk about this too it's like we don't really think of anybody as like a competitor Mm -hmm. because we all at the end of the day have the same goal and that's to end animal cruelty Mm -hmm. to make our environment more Mm -hmm. peaceful Mm -hmm. and compassionate Mm -hmm. place so we just all need to work together in our different platforms Mm -hmm. I love it (laughs) (laughs) that's beautiful thank you so what is your, your vision for delicate rain where do you see it going over the next few years open-ended question we could <laughs> probably be here for another hour <laughs> 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 um 
I think one thing is that we really want to continue to um, work with like the nonprofit sectors mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. really, um, it's one thing to give back and yes, mm-hmm. that's definitely something we want to do, but also continue to create mm-hmm. new projects and ideas mm-hmm. so we can include more people in it. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of people sometimes are um, hesitant or turned off by certain nonprofits' um, mm-hmm. ways of operating mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. the way that their message is being put mm-hmm. out there. And we kind of want to come in and be like, hey, no, let's like do this or let's do mm-hmm. that and let's like speak to a new audience. Let's like gain more traction and followers with, mm-hmm. um, you know, these new ideas. Like, I don't know if we talked about it, but we did um, a project with PETA India. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so mm-hmm. it was like the first time in its existence, which is like 18 years, I think, at this mm-hmm. point, that mm-hmm. they'd ever done anything like that. Wow. And we, you know, curated this initiative for them, and it was in conjunction with PETA USA. Mm-hmm. Right. But we got to travel to Mumbai and work with these Bollywood stars wow. and um, just create this amazing you know, vegan, cruelty-free, eco-friendly lookbook. Um, and we co-styled it with an awesome, you know, Bollywood stylist Yay. out there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, that was, you know, like I mentioned, the first time they'd ever done anything like that. Mm-hmm. And they just got so much traction mm-hmm. and so much support mm-hmm. from that that, um, you know, we received an email a few months back where, um, you know, one of the project team managers had mm-hmm. told us that a university out there had you know fallen upon some of the articles mm-hmm. and they had read about what we had all done together and they were so moved by it that um they <laughs> told their class about it and they mm-hmm. actually um printed our books and did like a study with it in their wow. class. Mm-hmm. so it was like wow. it became a part of that semester's curriculum it was really exciting yeah, that was special to that's us. amazing it's <laughs> so interesting because one of the things when i asked you about your vision or mission for the company or what's coming up. I'm like, are you teaching anywhere? Are you teaching people <laughs> about what you do? <laughs> they already started. Yeah. We yeah. so we'll want to continue doing that. And yeah. I also I think we want to expand um, Delicate Rain, not just apparel. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like we want to make it more of like a lifestyle brand, mm-hmm. you know, because there's so many different components. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe have a bakery and mm-hmm. like a home. Skincare. Skincare, yeah. beauty, home, yes. all of mm-hmm. that. Yes, it's the whole person. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's so many components mm. to it. <laughs> what fascinates or excites you most about the work you're doing right now? Is that one specific thing or the multiple thing? I think it just really goes back to the fact that it's so purpose driven mm-hmm. and people are so. Um, they're either so fascinated by it because they have no idea. You know, mm-hmm. we get asked all the time, but what is vegan clothing? You know, yeah. everyone knows what vegan food is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's really exciting to be able to teach people about it and the fact that they're so willing to learn mm-hmm. and they're so open. And mm-hmm. even if they decide at the end of the day that it's not for them, at least mm-hmm. like we were able to have that conversation yeah. and one more person now mm-hmm. is aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so. And I think also, um, you know, like most of our life, we're always trying to figure out what's our purpose in life? Mm-hmm. Like, why are we here? Yeah. And mm-hmm. there's some people that never can figure that out. Mm-hmm. And I think for us, we, it's a blessing because we're fortunate to know that this is our purpose. You know, it mm-hmm. kind of aligns with like mm-hmm. our um, upbringing and our beliefs. Mm-hmm. And um, we're able to transition that into a career for ourselves, you know. Amazing, and our yeah. purpose is to continue to mm-hmm. spread awareness, mm-hmm. save animals, Mm -hmm. and our planet (laughs) and all of that Mm -hmm. so I think we're fortunate in that sense I mean that's one thing we figured Mm -hmm. out in our life right (laughs) (laughs) there's a lot of other things that are that's a question mark but (laughs) once at a time (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah definitely and I I saw this speech that Steve Jobs gave a while ago and he said you cannot look forward connecting the dots but you can look backwards connecting the dots and I feel like that's what you ladies have done when you're sharing with me this was our upbringing like even being taught about you know the spiritual aspects Mm -hmm. from through your parents I'm like how amazing and beautiful so yay thank you (laughs) (laughs) we are about to be done with the show so we need to wrap up over here but I want you to share what's next where can people find you so just share with us so what's next um (laughs) we actually have a really cool partnership coming out in the end of this month Pretty um, much, yeah. with PETA nice, and yay. it's going to be involving um, a group of 
great talent. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's all we're really saying. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, fierce females. Yeah. Is, mm -hmm. um, something that Pete has never really done before. Mm -hmm. And um, once again, we're so excited to I be know. a part of that and like have created that whole idea as well and like just bring in so many wonderful um, influencers, actresses, mm -hmm. singers. Mm -hmm that yeah. are all going to be a part of this Amazing. collaborative effort. Amazing. So please look out for that. Yeah, keep us posted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. if any of you guys are in London in November, oh, we're yeah. actually going to be um, speaking at the Bevolution Conference, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be at the British Film Institute. Okay. Yeah. And so tickets are currently on pre-sale right now. So Yay. if you're in, <laughs> come say hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. I would just want to thank you for for being here and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and and thank you for